Hey guys, what's going on? Drewzy here back again with another South Park Phone Destroyer video, guys. And today's topic is going to be about legendary cards that just don't quite feel legendary enough, in my opinion, currently within the game. We're going to talk about five specific cards right now that need some kind of love or a buff. As many of you remember, right before the BFU hit, Stand of Many Moons got a huge kind of groundbreaking buff to a legendary card which was the first time we saw that within South Park Phone Destroyer so far currently within the game as I'm making this video as in he got a huge increase to the amount of damage he got from basically his uh, cast ability that he has or his ultimate whatever you want to call it where it got a huge buff in the amount of damage that it produces everything else about him pretty much pretty much stayed the same he got a little bit of buff to damage and a little bit of buff to health but for the most part he pretty much stayed fairly stagnant but there are still five legendary cards that I feel need the Stain of Many Moons treatment to really be truly usable within the game. So we're going to talk about all five of those cards here real quick. And I'm not going to be doing this in any specific order as far as the first card I talk about it needs it the most or whatever. I'm just going to kind of go through five legendaries in maybe in order, maybe not, as far as who needs the love. Kind of give some suggestions on maybe stuff that they kind of need and to kind of make them more usable. And then, of course, let me know down below what you think of all the cards we're going to talk about here today. So the first card we're going to talk about is actually one of the three legendaries I don't have yet and that's Inuit Kenny so I have Inuit Kenny's card you know at least here on the screen for you so Inuit Kenny is a four energy cost card he is in the uh, adventure theme and he has a death wish which he kills the enemy that killed him now his death wish in the grand scheme of things is really nice because it's a great counter to any card that's really giving you trouble so if there's a huge tank like say man bear pig early on that's a great positive trade energy wise as a man bear kill kills anyway with Kenny that's a seven card seven energy card and a huge tank removed from the from you know the arena that's just an example there are a lot of good even trades you could have with Inuit Kenny to where he's almost a spell card in his own right because of the fact that his death wish is an insta kill similar to unholy combustion and things like that to where it just wipes a unit off the field plus he can still do pretty solid damage and has pretty decent health for an assassin card uh, the big disadvantage to anyone Kenny in my opinion is his cost of four energy cost especially when there are a lot of cheaper cost options for assassins especially in the adventure theme that really puts him at a huge disadvantage I think in all reality I think Inuit Kenny would need some kind of additional kind of adjustment to him to really make him viable I'm not saying reduce his energy cost to three I think that would definitely help him but at the same time could be almost too powerful because his death wish is just so good at the fact that it can just wipe an enemy unit off the field assuming that you use it at the right time that's the tricky part is that at a high cost he's very situationally useful so maybe the lowering the energy cost would be the best solution for him or give him maybe increased movement speed make him really fast and assassins are already very fast and I do not believe Inuit Kenny has an advantage in speed over any of the other assassins uh, but if he had maybe you know vastly increased movement speed that might help and vastly may not be the right word but have increased movement speed over most normal assassins would be beneficial to be able to then use that death wish appropriately um, I don't I think it would be over it would be stupid and overpowered if you could target who anyone Kenny could attack but uh, th you know I don't I don't really know the specific way because I haven't really played with Inuit Kenny so I don't really know his pros and weaknesses I know he's a favorite of some people a lot of I just you just don't see him in the high legendary arenas because he's just not as strong as I think he could be so I think maybe the best suggestion now based on my ignorance of Inuit Kenny because I haven't used him would be lower his energy cost to three and see what that gets him and keep everything else buffed to the levels that they're at or keep him at a four and maybe increase his movement or attack speed to where he's at least worth the energy cost because he's not worth the four energy cost right now as a legendary card in my opinion so he would definitely be one of these five unlegendary field legendary cards uh, the second one is one that I just mentioned, Man Bear Pig. Man Bear Pig is not worth it, guys, unless you're in the low levels of PvP, like the 10, 15, even maybe 20, 25, 30 would be healthy for Man Bear Pig. 
He's a huge energy cost of seven, which is a lot. It's it, it's it's a lot of energy to commit to one card. I mean, there's only going to be maybe two or three, two maybe three max times in a match that you will be able to cast Man Bear Pig. But because most people, especially the higher tiers of Legendary, have almost all level five common assassins or at least level fours, and you know three and you know four and five level rats, they're going to chip away at Man Bear Pig so hard that it's, he's not going to be worth it to you. He has an insane amount of health, decent damage, but he is a single target focused uh, card, so that's his huge disadvantage. I think if Man Bear Pig had an AoE attack to where his swipes essentially that he's doing attacked the 63, like I have him right now at 1258 at max level 1, 1258 health, 63 attack, if that would do that for multiple units, then in my opinion his 7 cost is worth it. Would that make him too overpowered? That's up for debate. I think it would definitely put him on the map and make him a usable card. But because there seems to be a lot of people that get Man Bear Pig uh, in regulation, as far in regularity, as far as it comes to getting their, uh, you know, legendary drops. I've seen a, a decent amount of people with him at level two and some even at level three. But he's still not usable even at those levels. Also paired with the fact that neutral cards are so difficult to get materials for, it makes it gives him at such a significant disadvantage that there are so many more legendary cards that have much more priority as far as your materials go than Man Bear Pig should and has right now. But in the lower tiers of PvP, he's a demigod. I mean, he's very hard to deal with because you're not going to have the right amount, the high enough leveled cards, high enough health cards to deal with the amount of damage and how frustrating he can be. So if you're in the lower tiers of PvP and you're lucky to drop Man Bear Pig, he needs to be in every deck until you get into the mid, until you probably get into the mid 30s and the 40s, and then remove him and don't play him anymore until some drastic changes are made. But my big thing is, uh, is probably just have, give him an AOE style attack versus single target attack, and then maybe Man Bear Pig would be playable. But he definitely is one of the five legendaries that just isn't legendary in my opinion. Another neutral theme card and a very rare card, not a lot of people have this card, is Mr. Hanky. I was able to get Mr. Hanky to drop in the Christmas event this last Christmas when he became available. He was there for two weeks in a row, both for Christmas and New Year's. He was the event card that we were all striving for. I was able to unlock him, luckily, in, uh, in, a, in a pack. But Mr. Hanky is in its own right. He is basically just a spell card. You might as well just remove and negate the fact that he is an assassin because in all reality, he doesn't really do that for you. As you see, he does 39 attack and 35 health. I mean, he gets wiped out if someone sneezes on him, let alone, you know, him do much of anything. He does have pretty good movement speed, but I mean, in all reality, he's not going to do anything really for you. He's just to be there for his war cry, which doubles the charge rate of all allies for at level one at least, uh, 20 seconds, which is really nice. The fact that you get all those charges back much faster, but the real advantage for him is to already have those charge abilities cast out to where they're reset to where you can really take advantage of casting those charge abilities over and over again. And certain cards really excel with Mr. Hanky. Someone like Gizmo Ike, for example, really excels if you have two Gizmo Ikes on the field and you throw in a Mr. Hanky card and just watching those Gizmo Ikes just flood out essentially uh, during the course of a PvP, ma PvP match, it's best to be to use that strategy maybe in a friendly battle, not so much in a ladder battle. But, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, Mr. Hanky is not worth the materials and he's not worth the card, even as rare as he is, and as many people want him to mess around with him in uh, free, to, you know, friendly battles, which is really fun. He's really fun in friendly battles. He's just not useful in the true ladder system in the PvP arena right now. And... I guess the big, you know, he needs more attack and more health, I guess is probably the only way to really buff him. His energy cost is fine at a three. I don't think you should lower that uh, because I think, uh, you know, at worst case, make it a two, but even that might be a little too much. I think his war cry is good. It's not amazing, but it's good enough that you can kind of keep it where it's at, but you need to make him at least a useful assassin. He's not a useful assassin at all uh, as of right now, just based on his current stats. So I would I, my suggestion would be buff his health, buff his damage, to at least make him actually function as an assassin card with his war cry ability, because until then you're just never going to see him. Uh, I mean he's really small on the screen anyways, but at the same time, um, your units are still going to target him and still take him out relatively easily at only 35 health. So, uh, but he's a situational card as it is anyways. He's primarily to be focused as a spell, but he's just underperforming as a legendary card right now within the meta. My next legendary card that needs a buff is Witch Doctor Token. Now, Witch Doctor Token 
had a lot going for him, I mean, in all reality, and I really liked him playing him at first, especially in PvE. I think he has a lot of potential in PvE, but in PvP, really undervalued and really not working well, and I think a lot of the issue is his charge ability, and it's not the ability itself, it's the length of time it costs to cast the darn thing, because it feels like it takes forever. Uh, his charge ability drains health from nearby enemies. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, what that char what that means as far as the wording is concerned. So he charges for, based on his overall health. So what his maximum health is right now, his health is 346. Uh, he should drain the health of enemies for half of the health that he has as his maximum health level. Be 173, I believe, if my math serves me right. So he would he would absorb 173 health back from any missing health that he had at the time when he uses that ability but it just takes so long and i don't know the actual time of the of what it takes to charge it up it, i believe it's at least a couple seconds i want to say it's at least two to three seconds because it feels like it, and two to three seconds in the course of a game like this is an eternity in all reality if it's not instantaneous but the animation just takes too long to really work out because you could kill him mid charge before he even gets it off because he doesn't have a lot of health he doesn't have enough health to really sustain at that level and if i'm not mistaken medusa bebe at max level one has more health than which dr token does which is insane that a range card does over a fighter card so uh, i think his energy level is fine at a four i don't think that needs to be changed you either need to drastically increase the amount of health he gets if you're going to keep the slow duration of his charge ability, or you need to have the amount of time it takes for his charge ability to wear off. Because even when he gets that heal back, it's not like he's healing above his current health amount. So if he doesn't have the health there, he only takes enough to fill his health back to full. So if you want to keep the, low am the lower amount of health for most fighter cards, I think you need to then in you need to lower the amount of the ability to charge it up and make him his charge ability actually useful because in the grand scheme of things yeah it's great at taking out a swarm unit but most of the time that swarm unit is going to massacre him before he even is allowed to use it so those are these two ways that i would buff witch doctor token either increase his maximum overall health or fix his charge duration his charge ability duration to make it more effective and last but not least, we come to 6th Element Randy from the sci-fi theme. He is another fighter card, and like all the Randys, he spawns minion units, essentially. So his minions are summons robot vacuums, which are the strongest uh, charged, basically, summon units in the game out of all of the four of his Randys. He does have more health and I believe more damage than any of the other Randys. He has a little bit slower attack speed. He has a relatively high energy cost for a fighter card at 5 energy, which is tied with three with two of the other Randys, if my memory serves me correct. Um, and he's just not worth it, guys. Yeah, his summon units are very strong. It takes a little bit of time to summon them, how he currently functions within the game. And I guess the best suggestion to make him better or to make him feel more legendary is either make his units his charge units better maybe make them flying over making them robot vacuums maybe make them robot vacuums but make them flying robot vacuums i mean i don't know how it's uh, analytic how that would work out realistically but having them be ground units like make it give him something that makes him feel more unique than the other randy spawn unit cards because all the other randy spawn units spawn on the ground even you know the cox uh, from you know the amazingly randy if maybe you made them fly, maybe it would give them at least a little bit of an advantage over the other spawn units. Like, keep them at their base strength and damage level, but then make them somehow, you know, in the air versus on the ground. That would be one suggestion I'd make, maybe to maybe boost them up a little bit. Obviously, probably still needs a little bit more increased health. Or maybe keep his health where it is, but give him a little bit more tweak to damage overall to make him a little bit stronger as far as the amount of damage he deals out. Like, he does do more damage than the other Randys do, but, you know, he has a slower attack speed than Pocahontas Randy, so his DPS is lower than Pocahontas Randy just simply for the fact that Pocahontas Randy is going to hit much more often. It's either increase his attack speed to, you know, increase his overall DPS or make his spawn units maybe flying. Those would be the two suggestions I'd make for 6th Element Randy. But if there's any suggestions you guys have as far as tweaks you'd like to make to some of these cars that I talked about, please let me know in the comments section down below. I do apologize for the delay in videos this week, as it was Easter holiday, it was the most recent holiday before I'm making this video. I also, for any of you that stayed long enough to watch all the way through this video, I did propose to my girlfriend over the Easter holiday 
so that was really nice really uh, big news for me um, so that was really really great um, really enjoyed you know being able to spend time with her and really kind of start enjoying our early part of engagement a lot of work still got to be done I have no idea when the wedding will actually be but um, you know any support you guys give me would be great you know really do appreciate it really enjoy making these videos have a lot of ideas for the rest of the week going forward so there'll be lots of content here going forward guys for all of you but until next time guys my name is Druzy